to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can tell, I'm not the only one on set today, and that makes me excited. Let me move out so you can see the board. Back in. Very interesting concept. There's some scientific things here, and now since I failed science, every marking period of my career, this could be a difficult show for me, but hopefully the two wonderful people to my right will uh, guide me through. So, wonderful people, why don't you tell the Vaniacs out there who you are, and what are you doing here with all these scientific tools? <laughs> so we're Amplos Cellars, a little vineyard winery in Santa Rita Hills, and we are totally into Pinot Noir. That's our main production. So we, what we thought would be fun is to give you a chance to be in our cellar, over in Lompoc in California for uh, half an hour here. Mm -hmm. But since you didn't want to travel that far, we thought we'll bring Lazy. the cellar right here. <laughs> we'll bring it to you. <laughs> so what we're going to do with you here is give you a little experience of what, uh, what, what one of the most exciting things is that we are doing, which is blending, yeah, I mean, the blending process. I mean, to a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, listen, great wine is in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's first and foremost. Without so, that, there is no game. I mean, but the blending is such an interesting part of it. I mean, m most of the wines that I've made, quote unquote, for this store with, you know, luxury cuvées or different cuvées, the blending is so fun. Amazingly fascinating, if you've never had the chance, and hopefully one day you will, of how just a five-point swing or one-point swing or totally. can do. Um, I'm excited about that. So uh, 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 this is, to me, the most fun part of winemaking. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah. Is that yeah. your favorite Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And for you as well? Oh, yeah, because you've got so many complexity factors Tell you names, names. Introduce okay. yourself. Yeah. Oh. This is Rebecca work. <laughs> this is Peter work. And so Peter and I both make the wines from Ampelo Cellars. We often flip the coin to see who's winemaker of the day. But in the blending part, it's Who wins really, the coin class more often? He does sometimes, but it depends on whether it's cleaning or other things. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you look at the winemaking blending process, there's so many complex factors you have to take it into account. How much oak, what type of oak, you know, the clones, which are, you know, from a varietal like Pinot Noir, you have different clones, just like in apples, sure. you have G Granny Smith, Fiji, that's kind of the same thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. No question. And then sometimes you want to just add another type of varietal that just may give it a new aromatics or another kind of um, characteristic. So we have a little secret blend to I try see, and see. Dark here. Now yeah. tell everybody your backstory. Um, you know how you got into wine, what you did when you started, and you know I know that you know you probably are aware of this show. You know, at some point. So tell the whole story for some of the yeah, so, the accent, things of that nature. So, uh, first of all, my strange accent is not a New York accent. No, from, I thought it was Jersey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought it was totally a Jersey <laughs> accent. The hat is totally Jersey. That's definitely Jersey. California. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Denmark, came over to the United States in 88. I've been here ever since. Rebecca and I worked in the corporate world in the Price Waterhouse Management Consultants for a number of years. Which is a total segue to the wine world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, we, we continued in the corporate world. In 99, we had an opportunity to spend a little bit of money, and we ended up buying 82 acres of lands in the beautiful countryside northwest of Santa Barbara, in an area that became in Santa 99? Rita Hills. Yeah. Two years later, it became Santa Rita Hills as the AVA. And then Hollywood influenced it, and away you went, huh? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah, I worked for Walt Disney, yeah. so... Sure. Yeah, yeah. So did you, were you the guy behind the movie, like you've pushed that through, it was more of an economic yeah. play, you knew he had land in the, I, that area, you figured a Pinot Noir movie about that area would benefit You know what, I wouldn't go that far, but my so truck, my truck is, a puppet master. my truck is in the movie. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I got the, the award for best supporting vehicle. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, no, Did you get a straight up Academy Award for yeah, that? Exactly. She still doesn't believe me. <laughs> There's a lot of white pickup trucks in that movie. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, so you had this date, and was it planted to wine at that no. point? Rolling hills, just open lands, beautiful countryside. There was a well and a driveway and some PVC in the grounds, nothing else. So in 2000, we decided to move forward with a 15-acre vineyard. 1-5. Yeah, 1-5. Uh, that we prepared the soil for, irrigation system, trellis system. And then in 2001, we planted the 15 acres. Got and it. that's 10 acres of Pinot Noir, which is so, some of the things that we'll taste here today. And what was the other five? Um, the uh, Syrah. First there's Syrah, and then one acre was last year grafted over from Syrah to Grenache. And then we have one row of uni, 237 plants. We can never figure out what to do with them. They're kind of the straight... You know, blended into the Syrah? Yeah, well, yeah. We, we try to do... The problem is they ripen a little bit before Syrah, so it's, uh, you know... Don't worry about the problem. It happens all the time. It doesn't quite quite work out that way. So. Okay. But we try to. We try. Okay. Well, the reason for the Pinot Noir is Peter's a Pinot Noir lover, mm -hmm. and I'm a Syrah lover. So this is how we keep peace so in the family. So why do you get two-thirds of the action? 
Well, it's probably because I wasn't good at mathematics. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, right, yeah. I had the long rows and he had Everybody's the short admitting rows. their shortcomings in school today. Yeah, I didn't show her the spreadsheet. <laughs> Understood. Okay. And so when did the first commercial release of the wine come out? So what and how did, did you name the wine? Well, what we did was in um, uh, 2001, we, we had started a company up from scratch with some friends and became fairly successful. And in 2001, we were working on a project with Prudential in uh, New York. And we literally flew in and landed in New York on 9-11 that Tuesday morning. You landed on that day? Yeah, 6.30 that morning. The he was actually morning. supposed to be under the World Trade Center at the time, but they canceled his meeting at the very last minute. So on the way back, we said we retired with this whole corporate thing, and we thought this would be a very good way of supporting our drinking habit as well. Mm -hmm. And we both love wine, so we just quit our jobs and said we'd give trust to yeah. our son to teach us how to make wines, and the rest was history. So, Tell me about that part, your son. Yeah, so the story with our son, with Don, is that Don, he, um, he was going in and out of college back in 99, 2000. <clears throat> Don't know how much he studied there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're going to hate me for saying this, Don. <laughs> but um, we finally, in 2000, we said to him, you know what, why don't you move up to the property and you start taking care of the property? We'll give you a pickup truck and uh, you know, an old travel trailer and a credit card with a $500 limit. And, <laughs> then let you take care of things. And he did that. And then we went out one day to talk to Brian Babcock about selling grapes to Brian. Yeah, Brian's good dude. He's a great guy. And uh, Don asked for a job. So Don started in 2000 working at, uh, at Babcock. He was Very only, cool. He was 20 years old and, of course, didn't inhale. So. Yes, yeah, so everything was All cool. that. And then he moved around to a couple of other wineries. And in 2003, he met uh, Chris Kern from uh, Sea Smoke. Sure. And Chris uh, tasted his wines together with her husband, Bruno. And Chris Bruno Indo. is he's a crazy <laughs> character. Guy. Bruno is my is maybe my all time favorite person I've ever met on a wine trip. He's a cool ever. Guy. Yeah, he's a cool I guy. feel he missed his calling instead of being the winemaker. What was it, Sanford? For Sanford. Yeah, yeah. My, I think Sanford. he should have been a WWF wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, like, like hey, Bruno, you know, better watch this. One. Hey, Bruno's gonna watch this. Yeah. One. I mean, don't you think? No, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, he missed his yes. calling. Either he would that, be huge. Or just an entertainer. <laughs> I mean, no he'll, be, he'll be a great politician, except for he doesn't believe in politics. Yeah, no, I know. He's a good dude. So that He's whole great. area, there's all those, I mean, what an area, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I love so many of the guys in that zone. Stevie Clifton and, yeah. you know, Greg Brewer, who's extremely talented. Yeah. I've, I've spent some time there. So cool. in 03, he started, he started working. Yeah, so in 03, he started as Smoke as yeah. a cellar master. Next uh, year following, he became the assistant winemaker. Yeah. And Chris Kern left to go to Foley here a year yeah. ago. And then Don is a new winemaker at Sea Smoke. So, you, so your son is the winemaker at Sea Smoke right now. Yep. Which for all the wine collecting nerds is probably a cool thing, um, and is also making this. No. Or you guys are. Not any longer. Right. He well, did for a while. He's he cons helping you. He was, consulted to so us. In theory, he consults to you. Yeah. He told me what we know. Uh, told us what we know about, about winemaking. Wine yeah. yeah. But a year ago, when he got the new job, right. he had to disconnect himself from Ampers. Sure. So instead, we engaged with Chris and Bruno. Got it. So they are, now they are helping us out and Understood. making the critical decisions. Very cool. I mean, we're learning every year. First year I made wine was in, in 03. Mm -hmm. And ever since that, you know, every we're year you get learning. better and better and Absolutely. better. Absolutely. But there are sometimes, like when we make our final blending decisions, sure. we rely on Chris and Bruno and have sure. them come out and taste things. And Until you get to that place where you want to, you know, also yeah. make the yeah. best decisions, right? Absolutely. Um, okay, so what was your game plan with this concept today? What did you really, because you and Matt really did this behind Matt. This is what happened yeah, to Matt, you know. All behind my back, these things show up. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> um, sneaking them in. Yeah. Sneaking them in. Um, what we want to do is give you a couple of experiences. Mm -hmm. One is we want you to taste different clones of Pinot Noir. Okay. To kind of point out their flavor differences, sure. as well as you know differences in taste. Sure. Same so. same farm, but you know just different clones can change the game dramatically. I'm sure anybody who has a garden understands that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a big garden. <laughs> and then we want to taste after that what new oak does to a clone. Oh, I can tell you what new oak does. Ah, <laughs> the oak monster comes out and makes an appearance on the Thunder Show. Yeah. So yes. I know what new oak does. Um, okay, and then also this show when your winery has a little history because we it was on the show, right? Am I yeah. wrong? August. Yeah, August. And what happened there? That, that went well, right? I'm, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Okay, I'm, I'm, no, I'm 62 points. 62 no. points. <laughs> <laughs> But it went well, right? Yeah. I remember being really infatuated with the quality of yeah. the wine. Well, you you, did really you well. compared us to an Oregon wine and a French wine, and all of which. What did you think of that? Good, bad? No, it was great. We we liked the comparison. You gave us a good, good score, so right. I'm not complaining. And but did you get any feedback complaint. from that? Did you get some emails? Oh yeah, absolutely. Or, or, or oh yeah. That's what will happen. Yeah, here's actually a funny thing. What I'm really leading to is let's can we set the tone that I'm the greatest of all time? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll be good to you. What actually? No, but I, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I'm just really curious for my own. Yeah, no, you. So you appreciate this one. 
the first time I heard about that it was on was within 12 hours where I got an email from a friend in Denmark. Really? Seriously. <laughs> he emailed me. He said, do you know you've just been on a Gary show? I'm like, what? You're like, who's Gary show? Yeah. And they, they, this is, I mean, these Danes, they're very passionate about Oh, yeah. Ones. No, the Denmark viewership of this show is insane. Big shout out to Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> Can it? Thank you. <laughs> exactly. All right. Cool. Um, and so you did get response to some people join the mailing list, I hope. But you oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So it was good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. very yeah. good. No, we really appreciate good. that. I mean, well, it's great. Done. What you're doing to promote the industry. Well, listen, don't appreciate too much because I'm thrilled right in your face right now to pan the crap out of these clones. Okay. I'm okay. serious. Cool. Good. You see his face? Good. There should have been a camera here. It was good. better. No, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think, you know what? I appreciate it. You guys did it. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm just one lousy opinion, really. But I thought it was... Ex I do remember the moment. I do remember the wine being extremely well-balanced. That's mm. the thing to me that, you know, I can remember. I remember subtle things about reviewing wines. And that, you know, when I think of your brand, that is my first thought. But, you know, that's one effort from you guys. So sure. it'll be interesting to watch what you guys do along the way. So let's let's, let's get okay, into sure. this because so the, Mark's getting bored. The, the first thing I want to do here is to taste you on one of the clones that we have, that's uh, Pinot Noir clones, 2007, that's what they all are. Okay, so these and are all 07s. All 07s, and this one is a little bit more on kind of the finesse and elegance. It's a Pumar 4 clone. So Pumar is in the Cote de Bone area, sure. and it's a little, typically never a little bit... never zoomed in on the plastic bottle before, Mark. Yeah, it's a really, at least they're not corked. That's true. <laughs> Hopefully. So this is Pumar 4, right? Yeah, Pumar 4 clone. Yep. New barrel, uh, sorry, new sort barrel. At, yep. uh, 07. This, this wine is going to be sitting for another three to six months. In so you're now. expecting to release the 07 in about six months? No, oh, no. bottle it. Oh, ex ex that's, bottle that's what I meant, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, we, bottle it in bottle about six months? It. Yeah, and then you'll be sitting very likely for a year in a bottle. Yeah. We have this uh, feeling of... What's the current vintage in the market now, 05? 05, 05. 05. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we just like to give it time in a bottle and give it time first in a barrel. I mean, because you jerk off like the me door. on the internet who like as soon as the wine comes out, sits, opens it, gives it no breathing and reviews it and some people actually listen and the other critics and the other reviewers and exactly. being in the wine, you know, making business and having people that have voices in the industry review the products way too young, yes. plenty of people totally. without enough skill set and people listening to that and and deciding whether they're going to buy your product to me is one of the scariest things I know. Not as scary as internet on the plane because that will eliminate my production ever to answer anybody back. But on that level, I mean, it's it's a scary thing. Yeah. I mean, no, especially you're talking about a wine that's supposed to be in there between seven and ten years really doing its thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody pop and pour three weeks after you released and it gives you a score that you have to live with. It's like a scarlet yeah. letter. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the young wines are so harsh and they haven't yet even gotten integrated so the oak sticks out more and, sure. you know, the acidity isn't Such balanced. A and Such a factor. This is a nice, you know, bouquet. Yeah. Good quality coming through. Pomard is always what we consider the soft, elegant part of the um, blend that we like to put into our Pinot Noirs. Sure, the classy part. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Really. Yeah. Finesse, I mean, elegant, silkiness. Mm -hmm. Good ripe fruit. Good strawberry. Aspects on the back end. Strawberry. Good exactly. firm t uh, tannins on the back end. Mm -hmm. Yep. Still young. Seems fresh. Now, you know, I think this is an interesting episode. No reviewing of anything. I think having you here and talking about this could be fun for a lot of people who might be, you know, this is, with this economy, this is when people start following their passion. Mm -hmm. And even though it's crazy, I think, to get into premium wine business right now, <laughs> um, for people that might be watching, um, why don't we talk about some of the other elements? Uh, how about the way you price your wine. How'd you price your wine? It's, a great, interesting. it's a great question. What we like to do is we... we 39. Was <laughs> that was a dark one. I'm sorry. No, yeah. You know what? But, but that's kind of what we did in the I beginning. Know, we're like, what, what the heck are we going to do here? Yeah, so right. what we did was we looked around and what are other guys doing in our area? Sure, that's always Tried game, to right? find it out. Yeah. Yeah. But then we looked at, well, we also got to price it from the bottom up to figure out are we going to make money on this thing. So I know that right now it's about eight, eight. So what happens when everybody's dollars. selling the wine in your market for like $20 and it costs you twenty seven dollars to make it. You should be out of that business. You should do right? something yeah. else yeah. in your life. Yeah, yeah. that would be smart. Right. Because the problem will be. But what happens if everybody's gonna... sixty and it only costs you eleven dollars? Yeah. You then you don't want to be greedy. You should lower your price. Then you don't want to be greedy. Okay. <laughs> Understood. So go ahead. No, I'll tell you. When we got into this whole co uh, out of the corporate world, yep. one of the things we promised each other is money has no impact on decision exactly. making. 
Yeah. We're that's not when, that's when you people. build a good business. Yeah. That big, you know, the new Mercedes, the big sailboat, those you things. You had that already. Not, yeah, but it didn't make us happier people anyway. Of course. So I got a John Deere tractor instead. It makes sure. more noise. It's much fun. And you're creating something. Yeah. Yes. A legacy. From the beginning and all. The legacy part of winemaking, I think, is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, one day somebody will drink your, you know, 04 Pinot Noir in 30 years. That, that's insane. Yeah. To Hopefully you don't send us an email. I think yeah. the, the... Or something new, like a yeah. transition, yeah. and you'll get it. Like, oh, yeah. cool. But I think <laughs> one of the challenges we would have is that we do a lot of things that most people don't do in their vineyards, and so the cost is like, much higher. Like what? Uh, like, Sing to them? Well, we almost do. We do dr dust off every little berry, but no, we actually go through it. Almost. <laughs> that would be pretty hardcore. <laughs> but we go through and we branch lock every single shoot in place in order to get consistent uh, sun exposure to it. Okay. And therefore the clusters will mature. Clearly. Well, that, to branch lock it takes labor to go through sure. and do it, and then you have to take labor to unlock it, and very rarely do vineyards do this, but we think it adds to the quality of the fruit. But part of our struggle is, is to price it um, fairly back to the pricing, but not sacrifice what we really believe needs to be done. And what, I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And what about when you first got into it, press? Press is such a factor for the wine oh, yeah. world, right? I mean, oh, yeah. you, you know, you've seen it happen with Sea Smoke, you know, uh, Costa Brown. And, mm -hmm. and, and listen, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, Costa Brown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was your strategy in that? Were you in the ballpark of, we'll make the best one we can and hopefully they'll come in? Did you, you know, there's a lot of wineries that I think this is a, a very valid point that don't submit into reviewing because mm -hmm. they feel they can build their business without it. Um, because, you know, you go submit and it gets an 84. Unfortunately, people feel like that's a decision making factor for them and they won't buy a $40 Pinot, at, you know, that gets an 84. So, what was your strategy in that? Well, I think what we did is at first we started because we don't believe in scores. Okay. And we started down that path. Right. But there she was... She was once told James Lorby that. We were at dinner with James Lorby. She told him that. that I didn't, didn't believe in And then he said to her, well, someone was going to make a living from this. <laughs> yeah. But um, we realized working with a lot of our distributors that that was kind of the necessary thing you had to do. In a necessary case. evil? Yeah. That you had to do. It's, yeah. But, and we do kind of submit, but we look at the places we want to submit that we believe review the wines Did you submit fairly. to Alan Meadows? Uh, we have no Not no. How about Pinot Report? Yes, uh, Pino because Report. he is very A high fair. scorer. Yeah. No, he's very fair <laughs> I mean, in what he's scoring. No, I, think, I think he's good. I think he's good. Pinot yeah. File. I, Pino yeah. File, yes. Yeah. There's some yeah. really good Pinot reviewers out there. There are. Yeah. There are. And so we do submit, but our strategy had been much more not only building the quality of the wine, but you know what? The wine's got to have a face behind it. Right. It can't just be a corporation. Well, hopefully that's going to be your face, not his. <laughs> I'll remember that. Good thing she's between but us. <laughs> needs to have a good story, you know. It needs to have, because wine's about entertainment and social. So and you were very um, aware of building brand equity yes. and the story behind the brand. Yeah. Smart. This I mean, is because even part of the branding. I mean, I'm sure how, it is. how often do you find a, a guy with a Danish accent and a Hawaiian shirt and a cowboy hat? I'll be honest with you. I, I that's what I'm wearing for Halloween next year. <laughs> with a bottle of Europe, you know? I mean, that's I mean, that's what I'm doing. Was it a compliment? <laughs> a big time, being serious, a good one. Excuse me, trust me, you know, it's a real good compliment. No, I think it's very important. I think, now, talk about, for people that are watching this, are they able to come to the winery and hang with you guys, or is there no winery Any, yet? Or anytime. What? So we have our own winery out in the city of Lompoc. It's about a two and a half Is that your drive. house? No. Okay. It's a, um, but can people sleep over your house? Oh, yes. Sure. We've course. had people show up for a tasting for an hour, and five days later they leave. <laughs> How many people can sleep over in the house at one time? Rebecca, now we're going to get home. We're going to <laughs> Well, listen, I want to throw a maniac party. I mean, why not? I mean, hey. Well, we have you an see our opening, right, guys? We, we have can bring an RV and a, a camper up. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Got... And we love to have people come by. Yeah. Yeah. Come it's a people business. Yeah. Yes, it yeah, is. It That's is. the thing. It's, it's about it's a, This is a people. I mean, this is, you know, to me, I love wine. And I love a lot of things. But the reason I love this and, and social media websites and things like that, it's, it's a connecting game. And to me, you know, getting emails of people trying new things is so powerful. Yeah. Just think about it. On Saturday, people would drive three hours. This is going to become a two-part episode, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, on Saturday, people would drive three hours to come up and taste our wines, and hear us talk about that. In our prior life, nobody would drive three hours on a Saturday to listen to us talking about computer systems. No doubt about it. Now, has anybody ever said to your face that they hate your wine? 
or dislike it? Actually, no. No. We but do you feel not. that full of crap? Like, you, obviously, some people mm. might not like your wine. We've had to. Uh, Is that some, impossible for you to? Pack no. Them? Um, actually, we've had people who say, you know, it's not necessarily their style of wine because they're looking for that bigger, bolder, jammier. Fake fruit. They're hoping you pour a little Syrah in there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's right. Some, they're looking for that, yeah, what I would call that, that right. California-style wine that doesn't really go well with food. And that's okay. We don't make that. Yeah, we shouldn't but, diss California. It's no. just Clearly, there's been Pinot Noirs that are pitch black. Yeah. And obviously, you have to ask yourself, like, is there Syrah in yeah. there? I mean, they're acting like they're not the Pinots I grew up with, and I'm not that old. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? There's not that thick of skin on a Pinot yeah. Noir grape. No. So it doesn't but get I will tell you, probably at least 90% of the people that come up and taste the nine different wines that we make, their one statement to us is they have had very little, few experiences where every single wine they taste they like. Now, is that, do you think they say that because you guys are so lovely and they want to make you feel good? I don't think so. No? I, I think really people don't. are pretty honest yes. in general when it yeah. comes to opinions about wines. Yeah. This is very candied yeah. fruit. Not yeah. candied. Yeah, what yeah. is this? So this clone 2A, this is a Swiss clone, two also a. known as Vadenswell from the little city of Vadenswell in Switzerland. Yeah, I mean, that's very candy-like. Mm -hmm. Um, he, she's this like, looks like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what the heck? Um, Sorry. very candy-like. And to, you yeah. know, but a little bit lighter than I would have liked. Like, mm -hmm. if this was a Pinot by itself, I would not yeah. be into this exactly. wine at all. No. Exactly. But it adds a little charisma at the end. You need a little totally. splash. Yeah. And again, this the, is not a dominant component of it, or is no, it? No, it, uh, it is yeah. uh, about 0 0.9 acres we have of this. Got it. So it's, uh, it will end up being less than 10. But the nice thing little. about this, it actually gives you more of the front palate than what the Pomard did. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to blend, you're trying to make sure you're getting a balance, balance between those palettes. Sure. And so this one is much more fruit forward. Sure, and it gives that initial impression. You know, mm -hmm. it's like giving somebody hors d'oeuvres when they first walk into your home or yeah. a glass of champagne. Yeah, and that's one thing you need to make. But then sure. punching you in the face because it's got nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean that's kind of how I view this wine. Yeah, there's more. There's more. Yeah. Where is it? Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. So you didn't submit the wines early on, and, and now you have the times. But the thing is, sales. sometimes they'll pick them up anyway. Oh, like of we course just not. had yeah. a, uh, in the most recent wine spectator, there was a 2006 fiddlestick that we we released the fiddlesticks a little bit earlier. Earlier, because How it was do? ready. It, I mean, it got 92 point out. That's great. And we did not send it in to them, so they just they just found it. it. Yeah, it's they just so yeah. And now, tell me the impact of that. But that's how that. you did picked you get, up ours too. We yeah, I don't even know how. Did you? Did you? Did we buy it for the store? Is that why how we had it? We just had it randomly. No, you bought it off the rate and you're selling like four cases a week. Yeah, got it. Of that, so. Got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we definitely bought off the rate. I mean, that's what you do in retail. If people want it, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so this is a clone 777. And that is usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. one of so the more the gold, big sure. Dijon clones yep. in your face, kind of. But one reason why I picked this was because I just really liked the strong tannin structure that it had. So I picked it for the blend so we can see what the tannin... Um, what ten and this has a little bit of a stinkiness on the nose, which I like. Yep. You know, yeah, a little bit, just a hair. Sometimes the stinkiness is it's actually called a reduction. Yeah, absolutely. so it's a shortage of yep. oxygen, so it just needs to be splashed around. We, we but I don't think that's what's going on here. I think there's almost like a bacon fat little yeah. like poopy. I think it's actually mm -hmm. coming out of from the oak itself, or the um, the seven 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 itself tends to have this reflection. I really like that. That's big, right? Yeah. The I mean, color is really dark. It's not that it's only big. It's 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 almost charismatic, right? It's like popping on all levels. The mid palate flavor is mm -hmm. intense. Yeah. It's all, and I smell the bacon on the nose, but when I get that bacon fat flavor mm -hmm. in the mid palate on a Pinot, that's going to normally be my stuff. Plus, it's dark fruit driven. Yeah. 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 You know, the back yeah, on the back end, you get almost blackberry. I mean, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, that's yeah, really that's kind right. of. I mean, I like that. Yeah. But I it's like not that. as fruit forward as the this one here. I'll be honest so with you. I, I hate that one. <laughs> I don't hate it, and I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, because of what this does in the front, and I don't think that was so bad in the front either, and I haven't tasted this, I you know, I just feel like this is a kind of clone that was just kind of like whatever. I, I don't feel like, I, we'll have to see, and you know better than I do, but to me, yes, it's it's so candied, and I'm sure on the overall element, it brings up and probably balances it more for what you guys are looking for, mm -hmm. but to compare the other two clones to that, yeah. on my palate is And we, we tend to have this one not that much of this planted and more of the other. Yeah, 0.9% anyway. you said? Yeah, 0.9 acre. Yeah, yeah. Point yeah. Nine acre. so it's not like it's adding, a, we use a lot of it, but again, every clone is like having multiple spices in your cabinet. They all have a purpose. Yes. I, I, I understand that. Okay, let's go to the next one.